Hey guys, this is Jason from freesleepadvice.com as well as axgsleepdiagnostics.com. If you're not familiar with that second website, that's my business site. That is a site where I offer type 2 home sleep testing. Um, and I also do data analysis for people who have uh, questions mostly about Sleepyhead and what they're seeing on it. And so I've been getting, I've been, uh, it seems like it's kind of been picking up lately. I've been doing a lot of them and I'm getting a lot of questions that are the same. I, now, I've already done videos on these in the past on Sleepyhead, but I've never done it to my knowledge from this perspective, from the perspective of an actual sleep test. So as you can see, I've pulled up right now a sleep test. Now the person that did this was kind enough to let me uh, use their data. So I'm gonna do just that uh, for educational purposes. All right, so what you're seeing on the screen, um, we have body position, left eye, right eye, uh, chin EMG. Uh, this is frontal lobe, another frontal lobe, it's redundancy. So I can have two signals in case one cuts out. Uh, M1 and M2, these are actually reference signals, but I actually use them because they're closer to the occipital channels, which are usually used for sleep onset. Um, it's not perfect, but it's better than not having any EEG at all. And the frontal are actually you know, pretty good, as you'll see. Uh, we have snoring, snore microphone. Uh, P-flow is a P-TAF pressure, transduce <laughs> pressure transducer thermistor. I'm sorry, pressure transducer and thermistor. We also have uh, thoracic, which is the belt um, that's up by your boobs. Uh, we also have the abdominal belt and then the effort sum. Uh, that's supposed to be a combination of the two of them. Uh, then we have uh, EKG, so heart rate, and SpO2 is at the bottom. It doesn't really show up great. It's it a little green color. Let me see if I can change it. Eh, I don't want to change it. Forget it. All right, there are some, there are some things that were kind of interesting on this study that I really wanted to use because they're such great examples for sleepyhead, and the questions that I get on there very often. So look, let's just let's start uh, very slowly and say one this person i get a question a lot hey does do people that have sleep studies always get diagnosed with sleep apnea uh, the answer is no this person right here i can't say anything other than they are a person they had a lot of red flags for having sleep apnea but uh, after having just scored it they're well below the ahi threshold i believe it's probably just ballpark going to be 0 0.1 for an ahi uh, I believe they had, I scored one event and I scored maybe a handful of uh, respiratory effort related arousals. We'll get to those soon. Um, I probably, I don't even think I scored more than 10. So this person definitely is not going to be diagnosed with sleep apnea from my experience with physicians and what the criteria they usually use. I am not a doctor. I'm going to take this time real quick just to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. Uh, you guys are fantastic. I want to do a shout out to all of you, every single one of you at the end of the video. But for right now, Robert DeCarly, thank you and thanks, buddy. Dr. John Vanderlaan, thank you and thanks, buddy. And Steve Bradshaw, thank you and thanks, buddy, for being part of that $20 tier of donations. Also, all the PayPal requests, totally appreciate you guys too. Um, you guys really make this easy uh, because my wife doesn't bitch at me. So, okay, from the, from terms of, uh, from the I'm sorry, from the perspective of Sleepyhead, this right here, I'm going to show you exactly uh, what you see. So look, we have all this data here, right? Um, and with Sleepyhead, this is what we see. Wow, that's impressive. Oh, actually, you know what? I screwed up because you don't even see the SPO2. This is what you see with Sleepyhead. Uh, typically, I mean, this is a 30 second view. So here's a two minute view. And then um, we can stretch it out and make that a four minute view. But really, um, that's pretty tough to tell. And now look at this, we already know that this is wake. I've scored this as wake, they are awake. But you can see all these, uh, look at this airflow. It doesn't look like something's occurring. So that's why I always like to tell people, just take the, take the sleepy head data with a grain of salt. It's not perfect. It's better than nothing. But look, if you see all this stuff, look, steady respirations, you can see it's all over the place. And, um, you know, that would be really worrying for me if I were to see that. So hold on, let me let me add a few more, um, just kind of for proof for you guys. Okay, so we're gonna move forward. I wanna show you sleep now. 
but now we have steady respirations um, and the person is asleep. Okay, so not all, um, but well, that's all I want to tackle for, for right now for that, that aspect of it. I'm gonna go ahead and add all those channels back real quick because we don't we don't have to live like savages. All right, so kind of consider this a plug for AXG sleep diagnostics and the home sleep testing. We are massively accurate. This is pretty much exactly what you're gonna see for a uh, like an in-lab study with the exception of some creepy dude watching you the entire night. Um, it really does not get any better than being tested in your own home. Okay, so here's some points that I really, 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 really want to share with you guys. And that is mostly uh, differentiating things that are being seen during sleep. I'm going to do an actual, uh, a much more in-depth uh, scoring, like actually show you as I'm scoring a study. It's a little more severe, and I think that would be beneficial for some people. But for right now, I'm just going over the airflow. Okay, so if you see your airflow just moving steadily along, absolutely nothing happening, nothing happening, nothing happening. And then you see a sudden spike here in your airflow. Remember, all you're seeing is this P-flow line. But look at this, you can still have an arousal here without actually having something respiratory related causing the arousal. Remember, it's okay to wake up. It's okay, it doesn't mean you're dying, it doesn't mean there's a problem with you. People wake up, it's not a big deal. But here's the important thing. Whenever you see some one of these quick spikes with nothing preceding it really, and remember, you could just be awake during that period as we saw before. But if you see a period that is very flat like this, everything looks hunky-dory, you see a spike. So I say, people, this is sometimes just a quick arousal. There might be a position change. Actually, let's go ahead and check that out. Let's see, if, is there a position change? Because we can actually see that with this. Okay, there's not a position change. They're on their back the entire time. But you can see that when you take this big inhale right here, it's going to kill the respiratory drive for just a little bit. Now, this is what I always talk about with a post-arousal central apnea. It's not a real central apnea. These aren't counted except on the AASM inner reliability score. Uh, that's dumb, and no one actually scores that. It's super stupid. Every My medical director, uh, my neurologist, pulmonologist, all of them agree Please don't count these because that's just ridiculous. You can see there's no arousal. There's no desaturation. It's caused by this. Just leave it alone. Don't give people central apneas that don't have them. Okay, so you hopefully understand that. This knocks out your respiratory drive. You're breathing very fast. You hyperventilate. That blows off all the CO2. CO2 is what triggers you to breathe. So during this period, CO2 is building up, and then it finally kicks in and says, hey, dude, you need to breathe, and then you start breathing. That's how that relationship works. And you're going to see through this that there's several of these. It's very normal. You'll see them after actual real events too. So let's just, I'm going to go ahead and cruise through here. Okay, here's another one. So again, arousal for no apparent reason, just waking up. And you can see that what looks, what appears to be a central apnea right after that. Again, you see there's no arousal after it. Sure, there might be a little desaturation, but... Not a big deal. That's just your respiratory system getting back on track and getting that CO2, O2 balance uh, stabilized again, which it does right here. Now, some people take a little bit longer to do that. And a lot of people, when you have your, uh, if you have a ResMed machine, your EPR, your expiratory pressure relief, or if you're using a Phillips Respironics machine, it is um, A-Flex or C-Flex. When you have that on, that really seems to slow the stabilization, getting back to this stable breathing. It's almost like it, it, it makes it a little bit drunk and it takes a little while to get back into it to get that balance back. So that's why I always suggest people turn that off, especially people that are susceptible to it. This person doesn't appear to be susceptible to it. You know, you might see this trail on for another minute and a half or two minutes. Um, I spoke with a gentleman over the phone and seemed a little bit more susceptible to it. So that was part of the plan is turning the CPAP, the, the EPR off. Now, in this one, this person, you have to know that they're not on CPAP right now. This is just a regular diagnostic test. All right, now here we have a respiratory effort related arousal. Kind of looks like all the other ones, doesn't it? Except you can see here, it's a little higher. Actually, you know what, let's, let me back up. No, let's not back up, let's stay exactly where we are. So you can see respiratory 
is a little higher here. It decreases when it builds. We can see in the belt it builds also. You don't have that luxury with, with sleepyhead. Then you see an arousal. So it's also 2% desaturation. We call this a respiratory effort related arousal because there's an arousal and it was caused by a respiratory effort. And again, central, what appears to be a central apnea after it. It's not counted as we already described. It's not counted because it occurs after this arousal. There's, if there's an arousal here, I would have to count it. Just the arousal, but we're not. See, I just wanna show you how very common these are. Cruising along, deep inhale, deep sigh. Imagine yourself doing this during the day. If you take a deep breath, go ahead and do it right now. Just, <sighs> you don't really have the desire to breathe right after that. And that's exactly what's happening in this period here. You just kind of blow off all that CO2. You don't really have a desire to breathe. And here's another example of that. There's plenty of these, and that's why I just want to really hit this home. Central apneas seem to be the biggest question people have on sleepyhead. I mean, number one question is, why am I having all these centrals? Well, you're having all these what appear to be centrals because you're normal. And just because you see these, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing to have a spike. People take deep breaths in, in the middle of the night. It happens after non-events and it happens after real events. Okay, I wanted to get to REM breathing because there is a nice example of it in here. So you're gonna, you're very nice. Look at these nice crisp eye movements. We can tell this person is in REM sleep. All right, now right here, you can see there's nothing going on, right? But again, pay very close attention to this. Check out that airflow. Does that look like crap to you? That is garbage. But for REM sleep, that is very, very normal. You will see that kind of erratic breathing in it. You will see little desaturations of 1% to 2%. It's not a big deal. You can see there's no arousals occurring. You know, you're not going to be calling this a respiratory-related arousal because there's no, there's no uh, awakening right there. There's no desaturation. Now, I believe later on there is a desaturation of 4%, and then you do have to mark that, you, obviously, in, even in the absence of an arousal. But it's not disruptive to the sleep. It's just it's just one of those things that happens to fall within the rules. But um, th I think if anyone were looking at this on Sleepyhead, you'd be like, oh man, that's either something or, you know, what the what the heck, man? This is a horrible. Do I have chain Stokes respiration? What's going on? No, you're probably just in REM. If you were to start at the very beginning of the study, like when you turn on your machine in Sleepyhead, and as it's going, just kind of march out every 90 minutes, like 60 to 90 minutes, and you can actually kind of estimate where REM is occurring. But you can see it's just, it's all over the place. The REM respiratory signal in everybody and healthy people is just ugly. So, you know, suck it up, buttercup. That's just the way it is. So here, here's a little more. This is REM sleep again. And this is the example of the one I, I had to count. It was a 4% desaturation. Um, there is a 30% decrease in the airflow. So that meets criteria for, for marking hypopnea. So I did just that. Um, but you can see it doesn't, it doesn't cause an arousal. Yeah, sure, there's a desaturation. But um, hey, in this case, no harm, no foul. It's just one little event. And you can see respiration just looks like trash in REM. So just because you see trashy airflow uh, in your sleepyhead report does not mean that you are having trash sleep. It could just mean you're in REM. Um, but with that said, let's go back. Now I think we can all agree that this is trash airflow, but the person's awake. Um, doesn't that kind of look similar to what we were just looking at in REM? But this person, this is all awake right here. So that's why, please, with, uh, with Sleepyhead, please take all that information with just a, just a grain of salt. It's, it's a nice place to get a some information but it is definitely not the end all be all. Um, and if you start making conclude, you know, coming to the conclusion that you're having central apneas or there's some kind of a hypopnea problem and you, you're increasing the pressure because you see these, this stuff, well, you may not even be asleep. That's my public service announcement. All right, guys. Hey, if you like this video, would you please do me a favor and become a Patreon on patreon.com? I want to thank, seriously, every single person that's, that's done even a straight PayPal donation, anyone who's used my Amazon affiliate link from my website, um, and especially, like I said, the Patreon support that I've been getting. So that includes Robert DeCarly, Dr. John Vanderlaan, Steve Bradshaw, Mark Urquhart, I'm going to butcher some of these, 
William Fitzpatrick had a nice conversation with him over the phone. Very cool to talk to people. Uh, DK Pendergrass, Philip Hawkins, Patricia Espelong, Cynthia Patterson. Uh, you might remember Cynthia. She's actually in my. Um, I work. I work with her. She. I. I trained her, and then now she's my supervisor. She's fantastic. She is. Uh, she's. She's really great. But she was in my video with. Uh, God, what the hell? The bleep sleep dream port. All right. I want to thank Brian Nedved, Karen Collymore Chalmers, Keith Deemers, James David Bemmels, Richard Cronin, Howard Weinstein, Ginger Flynn, Gary Free. Robert Govin, oh God, I'm probably butchering these, Judy Bonalitz, Sarah Mann, Felicia Leisure, Dr. George Bailey, that's an MD, not a PhD, boom, Randall Moon, Heather Ann McKaney, Jim Talbot, Robert Smith, Rick Fleming, Augustine Lugovsky, I work with some, a pair of Russians, they're the Razzle Schnauzle twins, so man, I am popping on that Russian. Richard Brown, Debbie Land, uh, Randy Carnell, Kirk Decker, Eric Bouillon, Dennis Tryon, David Bergen, Cecilia Syad, maybe? Matthew Leilai, Farfig Newton, <laughs> that is not a real name, stop. Phil Gilbert, Gene Kohler, and Jeff Maddox. Thank you guys. I appreciate all your support. You guys make this so much easier to do. I enjoy doing it, but I also enjoy feeding my family. So with that, I leave you. If you guys have any questions or anything, go ahead and post it. You know, if you want a consultation yourself, go to axgsleepdiagnostics.cam and check out the PAP analysis. And I can go over some of this with you. We can talk about some things that can potentially make your sleep a little bit better, make a little tweaks. Um, in general though, turn off your EPR or your A-Flex. It will make your life so much better. I promise you that. Until next time, please like, please subscribe, and hit that thumbs up bell notification so every time I upload, you know it's there. Thanks, guys.